Aloha everyone and welcome to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host Lillian Kumik with Think Tech Hawaii. Today's show is same-sex newlyweds share their vegan life, marrying a vegan, a unique dynamic. I would love to welcome on my beautiful guest for today's show, Kirsten Olson, and her gorgeous wife, Anna Polos. Welcome to the show, ladies. Well, thank you for having us. <laughs> Aloha, Anna. Hi, happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. I was so excited um, when I met you just recently, a couple of weeks ago, and heard a little bit about your story and, and your journey. And I had to get you on the show because I think it would be very inspirational to a lot of people. I do want to start with you, Anna. You were the before you got married. Was it you that was vegan, and Kirsten was actually not on a plant-based diet yet? Correct. I have been vegan for almost four years now. Um, Kirsten is, I believe, seven, nine months in, nine months in. How long have you been married for? We have been married for since February, so almost seven months. My gosh, so newlyweds. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Did you have your wedding in Hawaii? We actually eloped in Washington. We haven't had our big wedding ceremony yet. So it's still kind of a little secret in our close circles, um, but we haven't had the big wedding yet. Okay, that secret may no longer be after this <laughs> show. I'm, I'm sorry about that, That's but okay. I, can <laughs> I can imagine it's, uh, it's kind of a tough time to you know, prep something like a wedding during the pandemic. But anyway, congratulations on your marriage. You look like just such a wonderful couple. Thank you. All right. So Kirsten, um, the question I'm sure a lot of viewers want to know is what was your first reaction when you found out that Anna was vegan? Um, so it was kind of weird, actually. We both went out. Um, to just get lunch and we kind of ordered the same thing uh we did a pad thai with tofu mm -hmm. um however i got mine with egg um but i've always liked tofu before being a vegan um but it was just weird to kind of order the same thing and that's kind of when she put the plug in that she was vegan and i was like okay uh -huh. did you under fully understand what a vegan lifestyle was like <laughs> Not at all, to be honest. Um, I feel like, to me, being kind of ignorant of the vegan lifestyle before actually becoming one, um, I, you know, I kind of was under the impression like, oh, you eat salad. Like that's vegans eat salad. That's all it is. I want nothing to do with that. Um, but now, you know, actually becoming a vegan and marrying a vegan and getting to actually experience the whole vegan lifestyle, it's obviously so much more to that. And I feel like if more people knew that, more people would be willing to do that. Mm -hmm. That's so funny what you just said, because I remember when I first met um, the man who is now my husband, uh, we, we actually went out for dinner with friends and that's how we met. Anyway, uh, it came up in conversation because when I was ordering at the restaurant, I did ask what the plant-based um, options were. And I could, I could tell that he was taken aback. I think he was just like, uh oh, got crazy vegan woman in front of me. <laughs> and it turns out that, yeah, he, he, when he first heard that I was vegan, he was kind of like, oh, I don't know about that. Only because he had no idea what, a, you know, what it actually means, what a vegan means. So why don't we clear that up first um, and say that people on a plant-based diet just really don't consume any animal products that, meet, that includes meat, fish, dairy, um, anything that comes from a mat, uh, an animal, including animal by byproducts such as honey. So that's, uh, that's what the diet looks like. We eat, in fact, I, could, I would go as far to say that people on a plant-based diet actually eat so many more different types of foods and healthy, healthy foods than um, people that do eat meat because we venture out. We want to, you know, find the healthiest uh, things that we can put on our plate. So definitely vegans are not missing out on anything, contrary to what a lot of people um, believe. And I'm sure you found that to be the case as well, Kirsten. Absolutely. All right, so Anna, back to you. So you met Kirsten and, and you realized she's not vegan. How did you feel about that? 
Um, I was I was impressed that she had tofu before we had even discussed anything because I think so many people are immediately just turned off by tofu. They don't they don't like the way that it's prepared or don't know how to make it themselves, so they never try it. Um, she was really accepting right off the bat. And honestly, I think she just really wanted someone to cook for her. So when I offered, I said, I will cook vegan food for you. She said, okay, that's great. And started just eating whatever I was making. Um, and I would say either way, she had always eaten pretty healthy, which a healthy lifestyle is very important to me. Um, it wouldn't have been the biggest deterrent if she weren't a vegan, but I love not having any animal products in my fridge. So that's definitely a bonus for me. <laughs> mm. That actually is a nice segue into my first question from a viewer, which is how did you navigate meal times back when you were on different diets? How, um, how did it work for you, Anna? Mm -hmm. I would say we really, she would honestly just eat what I was eating. I think at the beginning, she was bringing different things to work, things that were not vegan. But when we were eating together, I would prepare purely vegan food and she was eating it. Um, when we would go out to eat, we would order separate things. Um, but anything that I cooked at home, it would be vegan. And, and she was fine with that. Awesome. So Kirsten, has anyone kind of looked at you differently since you went vegan? Anyone in your circle or anyone at work? Have, have you had any um, issues or people kind of going, mm, I like the old Kirsten better? How did, how did it work? Because I know socialising can be a problem once you change your diet drastically and, and you know, cut out animal products, when you, whether it be going to a potluck or you know, spending time with family at family gatherings, which always includes food. So how did it go for you? Um, so, so far, kind of mixed reviews. Um, everyone knows, relatively accepting. I definitely get uh, jokes at work um, in regards to being vegan. You know, they'll stick to their meat. Um, but it's funny because it's, again, it's people that aren't willing to try it. They're just so quick to just, I'm going to stick with this, but they've never experienced anything vegan. So I, I plan on bringing some vegan stuff into work just to kind of prove a point like, hey, this stuff's not bad, but you can still eat meat if you want. But um, as far as my friends know, we have some really accepting friends. Um, actually, when we were in Washington, uh, we did a vegan dinner and everyone kind of contributed and they, they brought vegan snacks and cooked up some stuff um, and, as, and we shared as well. So um, as far as my friends go, there's been nothing really, and nothing's changed. They accept me um, as a vegan or not a vegan. Um, and then I will say my parents, they will be coming out here um, hopefully for Christmas. And our typical Christmas meal is uh, we'll do mussels on Christmas Eve. Uh, we'll do prime rib on Christmas day. So that will be a big change. Um, Anna and I expressed that. I mean, if, if you all want to cook that, that's absolutely fine. We're not going to force that on anyone. However, we, we won't be helping cook that stuff. So, but uh, my parents are actually excited to try new things. They've already asked, you know, for Anna's recipes for meals and they're genuinely like, they want to be healthy as well. So they're very, I guess, accepting and willing to try some vegan things. That's great. Anna, how do you, do you actually, do you ladies um, allow non-vegan food into your home? Um, to be honest, it hasn't really, we haven't come across the need to. Um, I ha we have had guests over and they were again, very willing to just eat what I was cooking. Very, I feel like when you invite people into your home, they're more apt to try the things that you are offering as long as their diets allow. Um, so we actually haven't come across that at all so far, which is pretty lucky for us. Mm -hmm. What would you do if someone brought non-vegan food into your home, like to share? Um, I, I mean, we obviously wouldn't eat it, but we're very open in the fact that, again, we don't want to force our lifestyle on anyone. We are more just about sharing it and allowing people to see all the things that we can have and the benefits of the food that we're eating without having to expressly throw it in their faces, so to say. 
Yeah, that's a that's a beautiful attitude, and I think that's where sometimes um, non vegans can get a little bit taken aback when when some people on a uh, you know a plant based diet are very um, unforgiving about things like that. So it is important to keep an open mind and, and understand that everyone is on their own journey. Um, although I love to promote the vegan lifestyle and plant based diet, I I definitely don't try and you know, walk around uh, with the magic wand trying to turn every, everyone vegan. It's up to them whether they want to or not. And leading by example, I see a lot of people get interested when you do things like what you and your wife have, you know, explained by sharing, showing the, the beautiful things that you can eat, all the delicious stuff that you can make. And um, not only is it good for your health, but also, you know, a plant, living on a plant-based diet is also awesome for obviously the environment and of course the animals. Kirsten, I want to um, tell you about, uh, I just want to tell you about Alan Page, the actress. She's uh, proud to be gay and vegan. And she once asked, <clears throat> pardon me, she once asked, why are vegans made fun of while the inhumane factory farming process regards animals and the natural world merely as commodities for ex or to be exploited for profit. Isn't that interesting? Because I get, I get jokes all the time, you know, when I'm at a potluck or hanging out or having drinks with, with friends and it's all, it's all, you know, just for, it's all in for fun, but definitely we get sort of more of the, the brunt of the jokes. I, would you agree? Absolutely. Um, and again, I think it's just, it goes back to that ignorance of not actually like doing research. Um, like I said, again, I was ignorant and thought it was just eating salads, but there's so much more to it. Um, and if people are just willing, even if it's a documentary, um, Sea Spiracy for one, um, I was a big fan of Game Changers because it's talking about, you know, plant-based athletes, um, which was something, you know, important um, as a prior athlete. Um, it's really cool to see, you know, those, those changes and those people. Um, but again, you, you don't get to see that unless you actually give it a chance. Yeah, I love that documentary. Um, the Game Changes, Sea Spiracy, Cow Spiracy is another great one. What the Health, also great. Dominion, Dominion shows more of the, you know, the sadder side um of what happens at the slaughterhouses and stuff but definitely documentaries are a great way to to get educated and um you know definitely if you have someone in your life who is on a plant-based diet it's nice to understand where they're coming from so i definitely do recommend some of those um, documentaries kirsten and anna we are going to take a quick break for some messages and be back to talk about your vegan life to the viewers stay tuned we'll be back shortly Welcome back everyone to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host Lillian Kumik. I'm also a vegan chef, recipe developer and author of the newly released cookbook, Hawaii, A Vegan Paradise. Um, my book is available in stores all around Hawaii. Uh, it's, it, it is a book of 100, over 120 uh, plant-based recipes inspired by the islands. 
My next book is actually coming out uh, this November 2021. It's called Tasting Hawaii Vegan Style. So do look out for that. This Saturday, I'm actually going to be doing a pop-up and a book signing at the awesome Anthropology Store in Waikiki. That's on the second floor of the International Marketplace in Waikiki. I'll be there from 12 to 4 p.m. this Saturday, September 18th. Do stop by if you're um, hanging out in Waikiki and come and say hello and do a bit of shopping. The fall, co fall collection at Anthropology is amazing. So um, hope to see some of you there. I would love to welcome back my guests on today's show, Anna and her wife, Kirsten. Welcome back to the show, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I do want to talk about your vegan life. Kirsten, um, what has changed since you went vegan? You said you've been vegan nine, nine months, just under a year. Yes. Um, a lot has changed. Um, again, now just eating all plant-based. So um, I get it. I get, luckily, I'm, I married a vegan, uh, basically chef. Um, so I get really delicious vegan meals whenever I want them. So that makes things easier. Um, again, because I, I don't like to cook. Um, so it's nice having, it was kind of an easy transition for me. Um, as far as, uh, again, athletics are important to me. Um, being healthy and fit is important to me. Um, I feel like my energy levels are, are better. Um, I actually went to the doctor just to get blood work done to see, am I, is there anything um, that might be lacking or, or, or low? And uh, everything came back completely uh, perfect. So um, I think there's some myths in regards to, you know, us not getting enough protein and, um, and, and things like that. And I can assure you that that is not the case. Mm, I couldn't agree more. Let's have a look at the first slide that you have prepared for us. This is, uh, this tells more, shows more about your vegan life. Anna, tell us a little bit about this slide. So this was actually um, on a West Coast trip that we did right before moving to Hawaii. Um, we had gone to a bunch of the national parks in Southern Utah, and that was at the top of Angel's Landing at Zion. Um, that's like a notoriously difficult hike. There's a section where you're basically scaling a cliff that you have to hold on to chains for. Um, and it was very challenging and a very big accomplishment for both of us. That was one of the coolest hikes that we'd been on. And that was at the very summit. So you're saying you do have enough energy to do stuff like that? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. I know. Of energy. <laughs> yeah, it's such a myth. I don't know how often I get asked, like, where do you get your, apart from the obvious, where do you get your protein from? I also get asked, where do you get your energy from? I'm 50 and I've never had more energy in my life. And that is the honest truth. Like I feel amazing on a plant-based diet. So let's just clear that up um, to anyone who is interested in going more plant-based. Um, your, your energy levels are going to be fine. In fact, probably um, really skyrocket once you clean up your diet. Let's have a look at another slide. Kirsten, what's going on here? Um, so that was actually uh, a run we did. Um, that's so the younger uh, girls in that shot are some of my soccer team um, that I coached in Whidbey Island. And um, Sherry is one of the moms. She kind of fits in with the kids there with how short she is. But I swear one of them is a mom. Um, but we did, Sherry and I ran um, a 10K and the girls met us kind of as we were halfway through and finished up with a 5k so um again just staying staying active and, and staying healthy i'm not i hate running but i, I do it to stay healthy and um again accomplished it uh with a with a vegan lifestyle awesome um talking about kids do you mind if i ask what would your would be or future children's diet look like anna what would, how would you want to bring up your children in regards to food? Yeah, so that's a conversation we actually recently had. Um, and I think we both agree that in the home, 
they would be raised vegan, obviously, as a child, when all the decisions are made for them, it would be purely vegan. I would love to, if I had a child, really instill the ethics behind veganism in them, um, get that passion for, you know, protecting and conserving wildlife and helping the planet out as much as they can. Um, and I think as they grow older, you know, you only have so much control over a child, but giving them the freedom to choose, but within the home, keeping it vegan would kind of be the goal. Mm, that's awesome. Um, Anna, I'm not sure if you, you're familiar with the Glee star, the TV show Glee. Um, Jane Lynch is actually a famous comedian actress, also very openly gay, um, married. She was quoted as saying, I've just become a much better person because of my love for animals. She's an open vegan as well. I've just become a much better person because of my love for animals. Do you think that I had this conversation on my last show when we talked about um, having more plant-based education or more education about the vegan lifestyle uh, included in schools? Because I believe children need to know certain things. What, what are your thoughts on that, Kirsten? Like when it comes to children, how do you how do you justify you know, telling your kids to be nice to animals, to love animals, to have compassion for animals when you're feeding them animal products, knowing fully well how that animal gets onto the plate and how horrible it is. What, what yeah. are your thoughts? That's a really great question. And it's something that, you know, I could ask my parents myself. Uh, growing up, I was always the kid bringing home all sorts of critters. Um, my dad called me Ellie Mae um, after that <laughs> character that was oh, just always had some type of animal. And I've always loved animals. However, I grew up eating them. Um, so I definitely think it's something that would or should be included in, in the curriculum. I mean, it, it doesn't need to be take over an entire you know thing. But at the same time, um, just having some type of plug or awareness, uh, I think could open it the eyes of a lot of kids to ask these kind of questions and, or, you know, maybe even have their own opinion um, earlier on in life, you know, other than waiting until you're 30 like me to finally, you know, see the good, the good side of things. So, mm, yes, I couldn't agree more. So definitely this is an interesting um, topic that should be, should be addressed in the schools. Um, there are actually, there is another question. I, I want to, ask Anna and only answer this if you feel comfortable. So what do you think about the claims that uh, vegans have better sex lives, whether it be they're more um, intimate, more passionate, more se sexually active, any, anything that you would like to share? What, what do you think about those claims that vegans have better sex lives? Yeah, um, I will say that shortly after going vegan, I noticed um, a huge increase in stamina and overall energy. So take that how you will. Um, mm -hmm. But that was a definite benefit as well as I do think that because vegans have to get more creative with the foods that they eat and how they prepare them. I think that we tend to get a wider array of nutrients, which also really benefits to overall health and wellness. So I think all of that really ties in together more than people give it credit for. So I would say that it does help and you do increase or you do experience better sex life, better overall mm. health. It just all is kind of one. Mm. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. Um, I think it was the game changers, was it Kirsten, where they they addressed the that issue with men. I, I remember they got men to yes. um, give a specimen of their their semen, and they yeah watch the game changers. I think when my husband saw that, he was kind of surprised at the results. So without giving too much away, the the game changers the documentary does kind of address that. But in general, um, Kirsten just talking about body odor, just you know underarm odor. Would you agree that vegans don't smell as much as people that eat a lot of meat? I would say so. And I mean, I can't, I can't speak for everyone, but I know I smell really great. 
Um, and I know my wife smells really great. So um, if that's testament, testament enough, I think, um, mm. yeah, that's, that's 100% accurate. Yes, body odor definitely is something that changes when you go vegan. So um, food, food for thought. Let's have a look at another slide. Where was this taken, Anna? So that again was from that road trip this past summer or in the spring, I guess. Um, that was at uh, Bryce Canyon in Utah. That was another day. I think we did 10 miles of hiking in that day. And it was just that view behind me in that photo was just, it was everywhere. The whole hike, it was just beautiful rock landscape. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we knocked out a bunch of miles that day. Gorgeous. Would you say that um, for me personally, when I became vegan, just my life changed in so many aspects, so many ways. I became more mindful of the environment. I became more mindful of, of time, more mindful, obviously, of what I eat. But everything sort of, as you, you said earlier on, Anna, everything kind of comes together and you start looking at life differently. Um, I started hiking more. I started wanting to go out and be in nature more. Did either of you, Kirsten, did, did that happen to you? Did you find yourself wanting to be more in touch with nature and, and, and be more appreciate, appreciative of things? Yeah, like I've, I've always been um, kind of outdoorsy, um, avid hiker, but I feel like as, as far as um, my fitness level, um, I do think that... I have more stamina when doing these things. So um, it's kind of a, it's a win-win um, in a way because I already love doing this, but now I'm not having as much trouble, you know, getting up these giant mountains and, and doing the work. Um, I feel much better after and I feel like my recovery is um, a lot shorter than it used to be. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's also addressed in the game changes, the recovery period being much, um, much shorter on a plant-based diet. Um, thank you ladies so much for joining today. I would like closing thoughts from both of you. Kirsten, just anything you'd like to say to, to the viewers who are watching? Um, again, yeah, I think it's important to just give it a chance. Uh, I, I was not a vegan, would have never imagined so, thought it was just about eating salads, um, but there's so much more to it, not just uh, nutritional wise, but uh, the effects on the environment and these awesome animals that, you know, we, we have on this planet. So um, give it a go, whether it's just one meal um, a, a day, I think it's worth the, the shot. Mm, awesome. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining today. I appreciate your time. Congratulations again on your beautiful union and good luck with everything in the future. To the viewers, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Lillian's Vegan World. Look forward to seeing you again on the, on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Stay safe and stay healthy. Aloha.